Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here, ready to deliver to you all another interesting slice of fighting game history. In the past on this channel, we have looked at many different fighting games over the years, including the dream crossover titles between that of Capcom and SNK that would all see release around the turn of the millennium. This was an epic time in our fine gaming past, which would see stars from the likes of Street Fighter clashing combat against athletes from the likes of King of Fighters and Fatal Fury. To this day, the Capcom produced fighting game known as Capcom vs SNK2 is often considered one of the greatest versus fighters of all time, with the title still having its own audience right up until this very day. With interest still existing around these now iconic crossover video games, there has been some interesting interviews in the last 12 months that have not only allowed us to learn more about this series development, but even revealed to the world that Capcom vs SNK3 was at one point being developed to add to this collection. In this special upload, we are going to go back and look at the lead up to the production of this unreleased video game, look at what it contained and ultimately how it would end up being left on the cutting room floor. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Capcom vs SNK3. Yeah! By now, many of you probably know that the history of Capcom and SNK fighting games have always been intrinsically linked since pretty much day dot. The original Street Fighter arcade game that was released by Capcom back in 1987 was directed by Takashi Nishiyama, the same man who would leave Capcom and defect to SNK where he would begin working on a spiritual sequel to his game. This would result in the release of Fatal Fury, Terry Bogard's first ever fighting game adventure. This would be the exact same year that Capcom would release a Street Fighter of their very own, of course known as Street Fighter 2, their very fighting game that would go on to shape the whole fighting game medium and the future of the field for years to come. Capcom and SNK would fire back at each other year in year out with high quality fighting game after high quality fighting game, each cultivating their own unique dedicated audiences as time would pass by. While many would imagine that this would result in a lot of competitiveness and bad blood between the two companies, behind the scenes many employees from the competing entities remained close friends. One example of this would be between former Capcom employee and Street Fighter creator Nishiyama himself and Capcom's development head of the later 90s, Yoshiki Okamoto. One afternoon when they met for a casual lunch, they began to fantasise about how great Capcom and SNK crossovers could be and agreed between themselves that they would work together to make their bosses let them make this idea a reality. These two men's relationship was not the only friendship documented between the two companies. Capcom's general producer, Noritaka Funimizu, and SNK's planner, Hideki Itsuno, were also good friends, and privately Capcom's CEO, Kenzo Tuchimoto, and SNK's founder, Ikichi Kawasaki, would also regularly speak. To add to this story, just for fun, programmers and designers who worked at SNK during the development of King of Fighters 98 would in their downtime even program Ryu and Ken into their fighting game purely for their own amusement. This endeavour at the office would also see them adding Goku from Dragon Ball Z to the title too. History shows us that it would not be long until crossover games developed by both Capcom and SNK would become an official reality, as this deal would seem highly beneficial for both companies. On one hand, it gave Capcom new material to put out, another 2D fighting game for the arcades and consoles, but more importantly, the working relationship was agreed upon to help push Neo Geo's new pocket handhelds. Having Capcom characters present on Neo Geo's portable machine would provide the hardware with some great additional recognisable IPs in terms of marketing appeal. 1999 would not just see SNK vs Capcom the match of the millennium on the portable, a pocket sized fighting game, but also SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters Clash, a card game that would feature characters representative of both Japanese brands. Amusingly, anecdotes can be found online with regards to the development of these crossovers. For example, Toyoshia Tanabe of SNK Japan notes that during the working relationship, staff from both companies would have Capcom vs SNK drinking competitions, and that there was so much love for the card game Yu-Gi-Oh! between the Japanese programming nerds that they would have Capcom vs SNK Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament during their lunch hours as well. Pretty endearing stuff, 
On the Capcom side of things, they would release three Capcom vs SNK crossover fighting games in the span of just 12 months. Capcom vs SNK Millennium Fight, an enhanced iteration of the same game known as Capcom vs SNK Pro, and of course Capcom vs SNK 2 Mark of the Millennium 2001, the most refined game of the lot that brought in a six button control scheme offering up an awesome fighting game affair. Capcom would make decent profits from these three games, eclipsing the popularity of their Street Fighter brand, with the Capcom vs SNK titles being more commercially successful than the three iterations that they had published of Street Fighter 3. Holding this thought and the pace that Capcom would produce these games at, it is probably not surprising to you that work on a Capcom vs SNK 3 would soon commence. Rumours of the existence of this canned game began to be backed up in 2018 when former King of Fighters series director Toyohisha Tanabe alongside Takayuki Nakayama on Capcom's Shadow Research Institute's website would reference an unnamed cancelled project that was in the works prior to the development of Capcom Fighting All-Stars, another scrapped Capcom game. In 2021, a year that has provided us with plenty of new information on projects of old, has confirmed once and for all that this game was indeed Capcom vs SNK3. In an interview with Polygon, Hideki Itsuno, the same man who directed Capcom vs SNK2, states that shortly after completing work on Capcom vs SNK2, he would begin working on the game's sequel. Here he reveals that originally Capcom vs SNK3 was intended to be yet another 2D fighting game in the series and was being programmed to see release on the PlayStation 2. However, as development pushed on, it was decided that they would rework the title into a 3D fighting game instead. This remains one of the most mysterious unreleased games in history, with no gameplay or screenshots of this project yet being made available. However, the scrappage of this game was not due to the development process proceeding poorly, like with many projects, but instead SNK deciding to file for bankruptcy. You see, with arcade gaming itself being on the decline on the whole for years, SNK had mainly relied on its fighting games to continue to bring home the bacon, and after a solid decade of making video games from this genre, this style of play was beginning to become fatigued too. Through this period, SNK had scrambled its resources together in an attempt to diversify their place in the market, which is where of course the Neo Geo Pocket Handhelds came in. Devices that Takashi Nishiyama had so little faith in succeeding that he would depart from SNK before any of the SNK vs Capcom games ever saw release, titles that in many ways celebrated his whole life's work. History now shows us that the Neo Geo Pocket Plan did indeed fail, with a final game in the SNK vs Capcom collection being released for the hardware in 2001, SNK vs Capcom Card Fighters 2 Expanded Edition. The system could simply not compete with that of the Game Boy Advance, hardware with a gaming library that had SNK's handheld defeated at every level. So with a bankruptcy taking place, Capcom vs SNK 3 was cancelled, along with any other Capcom SNK crossover projects. During this period, the company would be acquired by Aruz, an entity known for making money from pachinko machines. Rather than using SNK's rich library of IPs to produce new video games, instead Aruz wanted to shamelessly use the characters and licenses to promote people to gamble on their pachinko devices. This was a sad state of affairs. During this dark era, with a ruse having zero interest in developing games, Capcom would employ about 20 of SNK's previous staff members, including Toyohisa Tanabe, who would end up being deployed to work on Capcom Fighting All-Stars, the game that would eventually have its assets and ideas reused for the production of Capcom Fighting Evolution. Fortunately, this would not be the end of the SNK Tao, as company founder Kawasaki would found a new company known as Playmore, an entity which he would use to successfully buy all the rights to his SNK properties back with, even going on to rehire many of SNK staff members in the process. Fortunes would continue to turn around for the SNK brand in October 2002, when Kawasaki managed to sue Aruz for an astonishing $45 million, after it transpired that Aruz was still using SNK's branding on their pachinko machines after the acquisition with Aruz losing the copyright infringement court case. 
Now back in action, 2003 would see SNK Playmore release SNK vs Capcom SVC Chaos, the fighting game with King of Fighters style graphics that features Capcom characters depicted in that very SNK art style for the first time ever. Appearing in the arcades on the PlayStation 2, Xbox and even Neo Geo AES, in many ways this made this the third different major Capcom and SNK crossover game that appeared on home consoles. But with the SNK name being available to be used in gaming once more, this meant that Capcom could go back to working on their Capcom vs SNK 3 game, right? Well, while they very well could have chosen to do this, rather than focusing on producing new fighting games, instead Capcom decided to diversify marketing away from arcade fighters, much like how SNK had attempted to do so prior. Fighting games were saturated and Capcom had repeatedly gone down a path of producing versus fighters that had become more and more appealing to the hardcore and less and less appealing to the average consumer. The genre needed a rest, so Capcom would pump their energy into innovating in other areas for a while. Hideki Itsuno, the Capcom vs SNK series director, would go on to direct the Devil May Cry series, a franchise that now has an awesome and impressive video game legacy in its own right. Moving on, years were passed, with fighting games eventually seeing a renaissance post Street Fighter 4, with still no Capcom vs SNK 3 being produced. However, Capcom vs SNK series director Hideki Itsuno still doesn't completely rule out an official third game in the trilogy one day happening. Earlier this year, he made it very clear to gamers that he is not yet retired and confirmed that he still loves the idea of eventually making Capcom vs SNK 3 even revealing that he has two fresh ideas for one-on-one -on -one fighting games lingering in his mind, which he is for now still keeping close to his chest. He states that at this point he is just waiting for an opportunity to implement these new concepts, providing that Capcom will be willing to give him the right development team and a decent budget. Further to this, he mentions that he is always submitting concepts for new games, fighting games included, However, for now, the fighting games have yet to be chosen. In his Polygon interview, he signs off that he believes the represented chance of him working on this fighting game before he retires sits somewhere between the 30% and 50% mark. Thus meaning that while the original development surrounding the programming of a Capcom vs SNK 3 remains very mysterious, at least he gives us some ounce of hope that a brand new game in the series could make its way to the public one day down the line. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of the unreleased Capcom vs SNK 3 game. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of today's video and the events surrounding this cancelled game. Speaking of cancelled games, a couple of years ago on this channel I looked at the story of Castlevania Resurrection, the unreleased Castlevania Dreamcast game. Since the release of that video, a lost playable demo of the game has finally been dropped on the Information Superhighway for all to experience. So if you want to learn more about the Resurrection Tale, be sure to check out my wife Lady Decade's coverage on the subject, who has provided us with an up-to-date informational piece surrounding the title. Hopefully we may be able to see the early 2000s build of Capcom vs SNK 3 at some point down the line. It certainly would not be the first time that stuff like this sees the light of day many, many years later. Make sure you subscribe to both my channel and Lady Decades to ensure you never miss any of our uploads. Speaking of working on this platform full time, this is in part possible due to the general support I receive on Patreon, allowing me to research and make content for you every single week. If you want to appear in the credit roll on the screen now, and want to gain early access to these videos, then consider backing the channel over on Patreon now. Speaking of patrons, a new perk I have just added to my Patreon page is going forward, I am going to answer some Q&A questions from patrons at the end of every episode. So you will have the opportunity to ask daddy whatever you want. Yeah. So my first question is from Score Avensis of Retro Fix, who makes some wonderful um, custom consoles and apparel. And they are asking me, you live in one of the UK's premier seaside locations. What's your thoughts on the modern arcade experience? This is true. I live in coastal Essex. And in this little seaside town where I happen to reside in, we have a good 
five or six different arcades, which I would gather is most in the majority of towns these days. Um, within these arcades, you can find many delights. Crane machines, coin shovers, you know, all the usual stuff, I guess. But on top of that as well, there are some modern gaming delicacies. Um, the kids these days, rather than bringing the arcade experience home, it seems to be about bringing the home experience to the arcades. So you've got all of these huge um, cabinets that seem to be trying to replicate mobile phones, but with um, gigantism. So you have plants versus zombies on a giant arcade screen in this form factor. So to me that seems like a rather bizarre concept I guess that people are just wanting to play or children at least giant mobile games like how pathetic is that? That doesn't make any sense to me but uh, the best cabs of today are, are as always stuff what you can't do at home stuff with great peripherals and that sort of thing like we've got that Luigi's Mansion cabinet locally you know the one where you actually get to play with a Hoover peripheral or the massive uh, Mario Kart units with the steering wheel. Uh, that's the sort of modern arcade machines I appreciate. But the giant mobile phone games, that's a no from me. Cheerio.